Uh, so, so are there any links, do you think, between the battery technology that you're investing in at the moment and renewables? I mean, would there be... Yes, yeah, absolutely, so absolutely. The stuff that you're developing is not just for cars? Can are Correct. Some, yeah, oh, okay. In fact... Tell uh, us a bit more about that. Sure, so uh, uh, about a third of the output of the, the Gigafactory is intended as stationary storage, uh, primarily to be paired with renewables, but also to do grid buffering in non-renewable situations. Um, so that you can operate the plants, uh, even if it's a hydrocarbon uh, energy plant, you can operate it close to its optimum and avoid having to sort of peak. Um, the, yeah, so I, I think we'll see really a very huge demand for stage stationary storage. Um, and this, this is really going to help out some of the more intermittent sources like wind uh, and solar. Um, and, um, you know, it's worth noting, I'm not sure if people are aware of this, but it, it, the world could be powered many times over by solar if you had enough uh, battery capacity to pair it with it. M many times, like... Uh, the world? I mean, obviously California, where you're no. based, but in Europe? Times Can you really say that, in Europe? A thousand. <laughs> it's literally true. The, the amount of energy that, that reaches the Earth from the sun is staggeringly high. We have this enormous fusion generator in the sky uh, that, that is lobbing out vast amounts of energy. And I'm, I'm talking about just using land area. I mean, it's, it's really amazing. In fact, here's a little tidbit. Um, if you take a nuclear plant and you took its current output and compared that to just taking solar panels and putting solar panels on the, la on the area used by the nuclear power plant, because these typically have a big keep out zone, you know, about maybe five kilometers or there, thereabouts, it, where, where building houses, you know, and, and dense, uh, you know, any kind of dense uh, office or, or housing space. Usually, people don't want to do that near a nu nuclear power plant. <laughs> um, uh, so, th there's, there's quite a big keep out zone, and when you factor the keep out zone into into account, um, the solar panels put on that area will typically generate more power than the nuclear power plant. Yes, and that's not a calculation just done by you. I know, you can just, it's very easy to do. <laughs> uh, it's, it, so, um, so, here's a question uh, from give the you audience basic, then. If I, if I might, might sort of just do just a tidbit of math. Uh, the Collective <laughs> maths, 900 people, <laughs> mental <tidbit>. maths. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, w one square kilometer is a million square meters. Uh -huh. um, and there's one kilowatt per square meter of solar energy. So on one square kilometer, there is a gigawatt of solar energy. Uh-huh. With okay. you so far. <laughs> With you so far. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, if, if you wanted, I mean, you, you, you can get And this ergo, the nuclear power station doesn't give you the same. Is that the calculation? Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Okay, that so is, here, yes. um, but, but like, you could power the entire United States um, uh, w with about let's say 150 to 200 square kilometers of solar panels, the entire United States. Take a corner of Utah. Hmm. <laughs> not much going on there, I've been there. <laughs> There's not so even radio stations, okay? 